Hello everybody. In today's video, we are going to learn about linear inequalities in two variables. Before time, we learned how to solve the linear inequalities in one variable. From now on, the inequality will have two variables. So, if you remember, we uh, equality inequalities, they are comparisons between two values. If the two values, they are not equal, then between them, or we write greater than, or less than, or greater than or equals, or less than or equals. These comparisons now, they, uh, uh, in these comparisons, they, from now on, we will work with two different variables, where the variables are x and y. The relationship between x and y is that together they form a point, and then we have, when we have the x with exponent 1, in fact, we have to work with the equation of the line. So, understand an inequality in two variables. The two variables, x, y, where x, as we know, is the input and it's independent, and the y is the output, and it's dependent and depends on x. Together, they form a point on the graph of the line. Uh, the two expressions, the comparison between two expressions, it is not equal or is less than or greater than, as we said. So, when we have to work with linear inequalities in two variables, one of the questions that we have to answer it is to graph these inequalities. That we can graph them, we will do the same as we did before, graphing the linear function in slope-intercept form using the slope-intercept and the slope of the, of the line. After there, we are going to find two different situations. In this case, for example, the comparison between the two expressions, it is less than or equal. It could be greater than or equal. In inequalities, this means the interval it is closed. And when we are going to graph these situations in the graph of the line, the line that we are going to draw, it will be a solid line. So if the slope is positive or the slope is negative, if the slope is positive, the line will look like this one, and if it is negative, it will be like this one. But for both of the situations, as long as we have the equal, the line it will be solid. Not always the, the comparison between the two expressions, it will be equal. So closed interval solid. If it is not equal, we will find it only less than or greater than, and the line, it will be discontinued, like this one. In this case, the slope is positive, and I will draw like this if it is negative. For both of the situations, for the solid line or for the interrupted, uh, interrupted line, if it is about greater than, the solution of the inequality, it will be above the line in both of the cases. And if we have less than or equals or less than, the solution of the inequality, it will be drawn below the line. Solving inequalities, as you know from before, when we solve any kind of inequality, it doesn't matter greater than, less than, equals or not equal. Always in the solution, there we will get infinitely many solutions. Inequality gives us infinitely many solutions. For example, in this case, it is given y less than or equals x minus 1. In this case, y equals x minus x1, it's the slope-intercept form. The y-intercept, it is negative 1, and the slope of the line, it is 1. First of all, we plot the y-intercept on, on the graph. And from this point, I use the slope 1 to 1, so the rise is 1, it's positive, and the run is positive 1. So then we rise one unit, we run two units, and we get the second point. When we connect the two points to draw the line, because I have the equal sign, the line it will be solid. Because it is less than, then the solutions of this inequality, it will be every single point under, below the, uh, the graphed uh, line, including all the points on the line because we have the equal sign. 
rewrite an inequality to graph it. So this is a word problem, how to use the linear inequalities with two variables to solve a word problem. For example, the science club sells t-shirts and keychains to raise money. How many t-shirts and how many keychains could they sell to meet or exceed to meet or exceed their goal. So in this picture here, as you can see, their goal is, their goal is to, uh, to raise $500, uh, $500. For the t-shirts, each t-shirt it costs ten dollars, and each keychain it costs two dollars. So then we have two different things. We will have to um, identify a variable for each one of the items presented in two years. So let's say x represents the number of t-shirts, and the y represents the number of keychains. We are going to write two different inequalities. One of the inequality, it's for the item sold, and the other inequality, it will be related to money raised from this item. So if it is about inequality uh, for how many t-shirts and how many key keychains they can uh, sold, we can write. So the t-shirt, it's the x, and the keychain, it's the y. I know that one t-shirt is $10, so I can write. 10x and one keychain, it's the it's two dollars, so it will be two y. And to raise at least because exceeding to meet it means equals. To exceed it means more than. But equal and greater together they will give uh, they will give us greater than or equals 500. Now, this inequality, if you remember the standard form of the uh, linear equation, which was ax plus by equals to c. So, I have the inequality in the standard form. And now I have to graph it. To graph it, I can keep it in the form it is. But first of all, to make it easier for, for us, we can get it into simplest form. So we have here 10 coefficient, 2 and 500, where 500, it is divisible by both of them, 10 and 2. So before the graph, I will put the inequality into the simplest form. It will be much easier. So I will simplify everything by 2, as long as 2 is the common factor. And we will find 5x plus y greater than or equals to 250. From the standard form, we know that we can find the x and y intercepts. So you can make it table and get the x intercept and get the y intercept of the function. x intercept, it will be 5x equals to 250. Divide by x, it will be x equals to 50. So this is the x intercept, 50. And the y-intercept, it will be y equals 250. So here I have 250. I connect the two points. The line when we will connect them, it will be a solid line as long we have the equal. Not only greater, it is equal common. So then when I will connect the two points, I will use the solid line. The solution for this inequality, as long I have the greater, it will be all the real numbers, all the pairs of numbers above the line including all the points that they are on this solid line. Keep it in your mind. In our question, this is word problem. So it is about t-shirts and it's about the keychains key that they cannot be negative values. So then I'm not going to take this part of the graph, even this part of the graph. So the graph will start in here and ends in here as long the um, the things, they cannot be negative. So then I graphed, I plotted the x-intercept, y-intercept on the coordinate plane. I connected them with a solid line and then I shaded above it. So any point above this line, any point represents solution for this situation. Now to graph this line, to graph this, we could, we could convert the standard form into slope-intercept form, but we will get at the end the same thing exactly.
According with the graph, I will use the x-intercept point and I will use the y-intercept point and I will try to give them an interpretation. So 50 is the x, 0 is the y. So let's say y where y represents the key change. So with this money, they can receive at least 50 50 uh, t-shirts or if there is no t-shirt they can uh, uh, at least receive 250 keychains remember that when you have to solve inequalities uh, for one variable if you have to multiply or divide inequality by a negative value don't forget to change the sign of that inequality Another type of question that you are going to have to practice with it is when inequality, it is not given. So the inequality, we have to find it, but it there, it will be given the graph. And to answer this kind of questions, we will do the same before. We did before when we practice it with the equation of the line. We know that the equation of the line in standard form is, in slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So to find the y-intercept and to find the slope, we are going to use the given graph. From the graph, this point where the line intersects the y-axis represents the y-intercept. And from here, it's very easy to observe it, that the y-intercept, it is negative 3. To find the slope, we need two points on this line. The easiest points that I can take. It doesn't matter which two points from the line. So then, I have already found the y-intercept. I will take one more point. And the slope, it will be rise one unit and run into the right side one unit. So it will be positive one to positive one, which means equals to one. I will take the slope and y-intercept and substitute into the equation y equals 1 times x is x, and plus negative 3, it will be negative 3. But this is equation of the line. And from the graph, may I see that the graph, it is shaded above the line, which means this is not equality, this is going to be inequality. So instead of equal, I will put y again. As long as it's shaded above the boundary line, this means that I have to deal with greater and as long the line, it is a solid line, I have equal. So the inequality, it will be y greater than or equal x minus 3. This inequality represents the given graph. Inequalities in one variable in the coordinate plane. So we know there that when we work with the equation of this line, there we have two special situations. When the slope, it is equals to zero, or if the slope is undefined, which means does not exist. If the slope equals to zero, then the line is horizontal, and the equation of this line, it will be y equals to constant. If the slope is undefined, then the line is vertical, and the equation of any vertical line, it is x equals to constant. But now we have in this, in, in this equation, it's one variable, and here it's one variable also. But now instead of equality, we have to work with inequalities. What we did before, we will do the same thing now. So, let's see. If they give us graph 2x greater than 12, first of all, I will, I will solve for x. So over 2 over 2, it will be x greater than 6. If x is greater than 6, I will sketch the coordinate plane x-axis, y-axis. From the given inequality, this line intersects the x-axis only in the point 6. So let's say this is 6. As long as we do not have equals, the line, when I will draw it, I will use the interrupted line. And because it is given greater than, then I will shade in the right side of this line. This means that x greater than 6, this inequality has infinitely many point solutions such that the points are in any point in the shaded interval. 
If we have negative 2y less than or equals to 6, simplify, solve for y, so divided negative 2 on both of the sides. Don't forget that if we multiply or divide by negative, don't forget to switch the given sign. So it is given less than, it will be greater than or equals negative 3. In this case, the line intersects only the y-axis in point negative 3. And when I will draw the line, as long as it is given equals here, the line it will be solid. And the solution of the inequality, it will be any point located above this line, as long here I have the greater. So any point, and I have to shade this interval solution. The difference between these two situations, because here I don't have equals and here I have equal interval. So this interval, it is closed and this one, it is open. If the interval, it is open, all of these infinitely many points on the line, they are not solution. If the interval, it is closed, solution is not only the points above or below the line. They are also all the infinitely many points that they are on that line. Thank you and see you next time.